the reason why many people experience God's hand once and for a long season they can't see it anymore because God is not adequately acknowledged for the one they saw earlier and we appreciate him adequately for the last we are not qualified for the next it is on this ground again, Father, that we say thank you. Everything marvelous about this ministry is you. Everything that has been working behind them all is you. Therefore, we return to you today again all of the glory. Receive it of our hands in the name of Jesus. Thank you again and again. Let your word go forth with power this hour. And let it generate liberation order of testimonies. Let today become a day to be much remembered by every one of us. Visit each one in a unique way. Yeah. Let your visitation engender supernatural manifestations. Yeah. Take all the praise. In Jesus' precious name. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And please, you may be seated. Everything that was not so from the beginning. Everything contrary to God's original plan and purpose for you. Everything contrary to God's original plan and purpose for man. In anyone's life today. Must be turned to a testimony. He said, this is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. Our God is the reason behind this celebration today. For without me, ye can do nothing. And except the Lord builds a house, the labor in vain that builds it. It's not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. We acknowledge the faithfulness of God from the inception till now with all sense of mission and purpose. It is you, Jesus, and we ascribe all the glory to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'll be speaking to us this morning on the secret behind our sweatless triumph. And I've captioned this Engaging Kingdom Secrets For Sweatless Triumph Engaging Kingdom Secrets For Sweatless Triumph How potent Are Kingdom Secrets How potent are kingdom secrets? How potent are divine secrets? Divine secret made a prime minister out of a prisoner. It is not in me. God himself will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. That was Joseph's testimony. 
So the answer that came through his mouth was from God. Divine secret supernaturally changed the position of Joseph from a prisoner to a prime minister. Genesis 41 and verse 15 and 16. Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And Pharaoh said, Inasmuch as God has shown you all this, take over. Verse 38. How potent are divine secrets. Divine secret can change any man's position from the dunghill to sit among princes. It happened to Joseph. How potent are divine secrets? As it was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle, Job 29 verse 4, and made out of him the greatest businessman of his days. And he became the greatest of all men in the East. Job 1 3. By engaging divine secrets, the giant in him came alive. How potent are divine secrets? Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Daniel 2 verse 19. And in verse 46, the Bible says, Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his feet and worshipped Daniel. How potent are divine secrets. It establishes our dominion in the presence of our enemies. How potent are divine secrets? So divine secrets are not mere religious fantasies. Divine secrets are highly profitable virtues. That transforms destinies. That changes people's position supernaturally. That enthrones the most unlikely. Divine secrets behind the making of stars in the kingdom. Just as the triumph of light over darkness is sweatless, so is the triumph of divine secrets over life situations and circumstances. There is never going to be struggle between light and darkness. Every time light shows up, darkness bows out. No struggle. No noise. Sweatless. Noiseless. Struggle free. That is what your life becomes from today. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness can't stand it. Remember, in the beginning was the world, and the world was with God, and the world was God. The same was the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. And that light shines in darkness, and darkness can't stand it. 
darkness can wait. And verse 9, and this is the true light that lighted every man that comes to this world. So sweatless triumph is everyone's privilege. If you know what it takes. We have triumphed by truth till date, not by tricks. We have triumphed by truth, and the triumph of the truth is eternal. Thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and make it known by us the server of his knowledge in every place so we triumph always and in every place by the server or the secret hidden within the truth sweatless triumph is God's plan for every child of God sweatless triumph is God's agenda for the redeemed of the Lord. For whatever is born of God overcometh the world. First John 5 4. Whatever is born of God is born an overcomer. Born to be triumphant. The testimony of our sweatless triumph is the privileged access to divine secrets. Call them kingdom secrets. When we are illuminated by the truth, we dominate our circumstances without sweat. And that was the true light that lighted every man that comes into this world. My prayer is that today, God is establishing you in the realm of sweatless trial. Before we go any further, if there's any area of struggle in your life, whether in your health, in your career, in your business, or a sheer oppression of the devil. That my son from France said, um, what they did was actually to get him out of the place where he won't die there. That's what they did. So they, they deported him to go and die. And thank God for good mothers. He said, follow me to church. And as he entered, he hasn't done anything. That oppression ceased. He said, please, I need to go to the toilet. For three weeks, he has not been there. Whatever represents a concern in anyone's life, take a piece of paper. Because they must drop here today. That testimony is prophetic. Every oppression of the devil must drop off your life today. All over the world, wherever you are, take a piece of paper. And write down the things that must end here today. Because whatever was not so from the beginning has no legal right to follow you back home. It's once in a year service. 
So, you must define your expectation. Be specific, like Bartimaeus. Be definitive, like Hannah. Give me a man child, and I'll give him back to you. Be intense. You know, that my son from the U.S. who was delivered of cancer of the blood, lymphobia. Now, he said, I was desperate for my healing. So I fall in spite of the pains in my body. I follow the instructions online in the hospital. Dying. I followed the instructions. I went and poured water into a bowl. I couldn't bend to wash my feet, so I used one foot to scrub the other. And I slept off. Ah. With my feet inside the water. I woke up into a new world. He said, all the pains vanished. He said, my feet became lighter. Immediately I knew I'd be healed. I saw him some two years after here in Canaan. He said, I was desperate for my healing. Don't be casual. This will not happen until next year. Abba. God only calls people when his feast is ready. Tell them, all things are now ready. God never gathers people to come and try I was desperate for my healing. Jacob was desperate for a change of position. He got it. Be intense like the man Ezekiah. Oh God, no, no. And God said, okay, 50 more years. Be intense. My marital destiny is released today. My distressed home is restored today. My dying career bounces back to life today. My head fully restored today. Don't be casual. And engage with faith. After you have written that, put it underneath your seat. Because I'm going to pick it up as a testimony at the end of this service. You are picking it up as a testimony at the end of this service. That concern concerning your child is turned to a testimony today. That concern concerning that issue concerning your business is turned to a testimony today. That health issue. Returns as testimony today. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. There is a God in heaven that reveals secrets. Daniel chapter 2, verse 28. What we call secrets. In the Old Testament, it was it's called mysteries today in the New Testament. So we gain mastery over the issues of life by engaging the mysteries of the kingdom. We gain mastery over the issues of life by engaging the mysteries of the kingdom. That's why it is divine secrets that make stars in the kingdom. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1. For this cause I, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given to me, to you all, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, or call it the secret, as I wrote a foreign in few words. So, whereby when you read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ or the secret of Christ. 
which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. So there are now revelations or now mysteries being unveiled by God according to his eternal purpose. As the Lord liveth, the one that handed down this mandate, whatever you have written down today returns as wholesome testimony. We may teach and write kingdom secrets, but only God can reveal them. Only God can reveal them. You know, you can imagine, Jesus stood with his two disciples on the way to Amos, and they couldn't recognize him, and he lived with them for three and a half years, because their eyes were holding. Wherever you are seated, lift up your right hand. Open down my eyes, Lord. That I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Anoint my eyes with eye salves that I may see what you are showing to me this morning. Amen. Amen. But we must understand that kingdom secrets are full of simplicities. But I fear, lest by any means, as Satan beget Eve through his subtlety, 2 Corinthians 11.3, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Kingdom mysteries are made of simplicities. They are things that don't appear to add up. But that is where the power lies. Kingdom mysteries are wrapped up in simplicity. For instance, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And God said to me, I am only committed to building my church. If it's your own church, you will have to build it. But because the church is being built against the gates of hell, no man has capacity to build this successfully. When it's your church, you will need to take responsibility to build it. That's why you never hear from me, my church. And you won't hear that till my time on earth is over. Your church has no capacity for growth. Because the builder of growing churches is not there. Matthew 16, 18. I will build my church. You know why this church has been growing unstoppably? It is his church. And he is the builder. And the gates of hell can't stand it. So this is not our church. In case you are in a board or in a committee. It's not your church. As the privileged founder, it's not my church. That's why the one who purchased the church with his blood should be allowed to own it. Otherwise, it will come down. If you know how many forces of darkness are working relentlessly to bring this church down, you'll be amazed. But because the builder is superior to the opposition, they can't succeed. I will build my church. Watch every pastor that says, my church, my church. They have placed a limit on how far they can go. The gates of hell just 
stand on their way and they can't go any further. I thank God for my church, um, my wife and I. We know how much we have paid in terms of price to build this church. So you find them, 300, 200, and after some time, 100, and they come again, 150, and then when they say, my church again, it comes down to 80. As simple as that is, you can be struggling for life as a pastor. You don't see anything. Young Gicho put a, a seat in the church for the Holy Spirit. You can't see any growth except you understand. It can't be your church. It looks so simple. There is no information you need about this church that you need me. It is church, so it's open to all his workers. Open to all his workers. I don't have any confidential compartment where anything is kept. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This is not our family church. Never. Not mine. Can never be mine. I have no capacity to own a church. Many years ago, one of our men had a vision to go to ministry. And he said to me, I said, if there's anything you need, let me know. He said, if I can be given the church that I'm pastoring, I said, ah, you don't give what you don't own. Can I go outside there and give somebody your car? I said, I just like you. He said, take this car. <laughs> and I'm not the owner. Uh, don't try it. You may end up in jail. You can't give what you don't own. Because I knew long time that only his church can stand the test of time. Kingdom mysteries are wrapped up in simplicities. You just need to know it. You just need to know it or you'll be struggling for life. How has your church been sweatlessly triumphant? It has been his church. And he has remained the builder that cannot be stopped by the gates of hell. Let me hear you now. Let's amen. Remember, he purchased the church with his own blood and it will never be for sale. So nobody can ever get it to buy. Amen. No price in the world can match the price paid to purchase the church. Ask chapter 20, verse 28. You need the sinless blood for that to happen. And there is no sinless blood anywhere else than in Christ. He purchased it with his own blood and is never out for sale. So no one can own it. But Jesus. So in case anybody is involved in one way or another, never let it occur to you that we own it. Or it would depose you and throw you off. Over the bar. Simple truth, but powerful for swellness trial. In ministry, you own it, you will pay for it. You own it, you will pay the bills. You own it, you will take full responsibility. And because we are limited, then everything gets limited. The reason why this church is advancing sweatlessly is because the owner is allowed to own it. And no force in hell can stop the church that Christ is building. Listen to this, and I want you to be blessed by it. Let me at this point just mention this. I want every genuine member of this church grab a copy of the mandate. It's not just an administrative manual. It carries the foundation of the ministry, the foundation where the ministry came out from and the encounters that open one chapter after another till date. Every member should look for this. Every general member should have this. 
It will help you know where you are and what is available to you there. It's important. That makes you a free partaker of the grace that goes on there. You can order copies. They have a large uh, position now that they just brought that will help you. Please make sure you get it. And then we have this book, Pillars of Destiny. They are just they are sample messages of the 12 pillars. So you know what we preach and you know what to expect. There are seven, seven teachings here on each pillar that will help boost your faith. This is volume one, volume two is on its way coming. Just to help you appreciate what obtains where you are. We need to be educated. We need to be enlightened. We need to be connected. Then the best of what is available comes our way. And then, of course, these uh, signs and wonders today, they are the proofs that authenticate the messages. And I can tell you from the testimony of Wigglesworth, God empowered me about principles and powers without sweat. 1979. Testimonies are powerful tools for boosting your faith and for connecting you to your own inheritance in Christ. So please take advantage of those materials. And those who have them, don't decorate them on your shelf. Don't use them as decoration items. See them as solution carriers. Whatever anyone may be confronted with at any time. And in the name of Jesus, I can tell you, you are on board this flight. Everything that God serves on this flight is your right. Yeah. There are people here today that this last sickness you saw, or the one that may be in your body today, is the last sickness you will ever see in your life. Yeah. Just be desperate enough to forcefully take your portion. Let me share with you seven among the several encounters with divine secrets that changed my life. And I'd like you to listen because your own word must come today. Back in 1976, I encountered a mystery from Matthew 6, 33. It's as if it happened yesterday. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that others are dying to get, they shall be added to you. I call it the jackpot of life. God just showed me one thing to engage with that will put me in command of all other things that others are dying to get. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its diverse interests and all these things that others are dying to get. They shall be added to you. Now, listen to me. September 12th, 1976. I knew from that point that I would not have to struggle for anything. I, I, was, I was assured. I had absolute confidence that that truth has set me free from every form of struggle. That is God-centeredness put in command of all other issues of life. God-centeredness. Loving God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Puts you on top of all other issues of life. I don't know what, but like I told you, you may teach secrets. Only God can reveal them. May God reveal this to you today. Amen. May God reveal this to you today. Amen. 
God-centeredness is the mystery behind your dominion on the earth. All these things that others are dying to get, they shall be added unto you. For eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It hasn't entered the heart of any man the things that God has in stock for them that love him. Loving God all reservedly. Going after kingdom issues with utmost excitement. I don't know how you feel, and there's nothing wrong about you praying for those things, but I have not had the opportunity of praying for any of those things. And I can tell you this, I've never had to pray for a car. I've never had to pray for a house. One encounter settles me. Yet, I have them. Beyond where to even put them. Please understand what I'm talking about. I have never had to pray for money. For my person. And you know your church has never lifted them any prayer item on money. No. Not just when you are in Lagos. At the beginning, from the beginning. All these things shall be added unto you. Oh, no, you come and pray. Oh Lord, oh Lord, bring the people in the name of Jesus. Save them in the name of Jesus. Set free your prayer. And we do that tirelessly. You can see. So when your life is dominated by the kingdom, your dominion is established. Dominated by the kingdom. September 12, 1976. Serving God and the interest of his kingdom is absolutely for your benefit. Not his benefit. Thou shalt serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread and your water. God can't be any more blessed than he's blessed. He already feels all in all, and he's the most high. He's the only wise God. There is nothing more in it. The earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof, the world, and all that do they are in. So giving God the first place in your life is absolutely to your benefit. Absolutely to your benefit. Nineteen seventy-nine, reading a book titled "The Apostle of Faith," light broke out from the testimony of Wigglesworth that I have been raised up together with Christ, Ephesians two six, and made to sit together with Christ in heavenly places. What? And that place located far above, and I was, I said, I was hearing far above for the first time in my life. Far about i was imparted with life from that far above a secret has been unveiled i saw me immediately on top of witches and wizards not talking nonsense and occultic nonsense i saw it as i mean it, it was like a, a coronation it was like a coronation boy you are now being coronated and true in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus, far above. Friends, let me tell you what that does. It sets you free from fear. It's a nothing. Be terrified by your adversaries, which is to them a token of destruction, but to you of salvation and that of God. Philippians chapter 1, verse 28. In nothing. You can't be afraid of what you are far above. You can't be afraid of what you are far above. Philippians 1, 28. In nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of destruction, but to you of salvation and, of, and that of God. 
Satan far about witches. So I said, how many of you are witches here? Stand up. Why? You are far about them. Okay, you come on here. You are talking, telling witches that. What do you do with the devil? Because you are far about it has destroyed every trace of fear in your system. Ah, that is not a special privilege of some few. It is the general privilege of all the redeemed. Everyone that is saved has been raised up together and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And that place is far above all principalities and powers and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. No matter how generational the root of your problem, I can tell you this. That revelation liberates you from fear absolutely and establishes your dominion over the devil and his cohorts. Come on, say with me, I'm free. free. Say it louder, I'm free. free. The loudest you can, I'm free. free. No matter how wide a dog, if he sees a lion, his eye will clear. Amen. No matter. You know, they talked about rabies. There is no rabies demon that can make a dog say to a lion, What do you mean? The moment he sights a lion, rabies clears. He flees. That's how forces of darkness will be clearing the way for you from now. At the time, one of my little ones was afflicted by the spirit of insanity. And they mentioned that to me when I was home for a family meeting, December 1983. And I said, okay, when we are through with the meeting, there's nothing to worry about there. When we are through with the meeting, I'll be there. I was too sure that my arrival would meet the end of it. Because I was just swimming in Revelation, John chapter 1 verse 5, that light shines in darkness, darkness can't handle. When I appear, there darkness will know who has come. As I came in there, my wife and myself, he stood up to greet me. A madness. I mean, no matter how mad a man, when you see fire, you will know. A madman doesn't need warning from fire that I'm fire. And he said, No, 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 you think I'm that mad? You know, it clears. He prostrated and they said, Do you know him? He said, Yeah, that's my brother. Um, they said, Measure his name and he mentioned my name. I said, Put him in my car. Let me see the devil that can enter my car with me. There was no prayer. You know, because you have caught this mystery behind your new position in redemption. He slept off in 10 minutes and that was the end of it. No medication, no tablet, no injection, no nothing. December 25, 1983, it ended there. I don't know how long you may have carried any plague. It must end here today. It must end here this morning. It must end here this morning. Secret number three. Show me, Lord, the secret of kingdom prosperity. March 28th to 22nd, 1982. Show me the secret of kingdom prosperity. Praying, fasting, searching. Mm. Listen, it is the glory of the Lord to conceal a matter. Proverbs 25, verse 2. But the honor of kings is to search them out. There are no earthly treasures by the roadside. Every genuine treasure is hidden in the belly of the earth. It takes explorers to find them. It takes what? Explorers. It takes, it, it, not just searchers, it takes explorers to find them. So I was hunting for kingdom secrets of prosperity. And I gave me three days. I was on a three day exploration, secret finding mission, 
secret finding mission. And I had two books with me, The Law of Prosperity by Kenneth Copeland, God's Will is Prosperity by Gloria Copeland. And I was searching and praying. I was hunting for secrets, not stories. On the third day, light broke forth. Because fasting is a platform for outbreak of revelation. Outbreak of revelation. Supernatural access to secrets. Isaiah 58 and verse 6. Is this not the father that I've chosen? He said, then shall your life break forth. Verse 8. Out of obscurity. Your life shall break forth as the morning. Breaking forth. Outbreak of revelation. Supernatural access to secrets. And verse 10. Then your life shall rise in obscurity. Then shall thy light rise in obscurity. And thy darkness will be as noonday. So fasting and prayer, among other things, is for access to outbreak of revelations. Amen. Supernatural access to divine secrets. Glory to God. On the third day, God came down. And what did he say? My son David, from Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. It's never in any of the books I'd read. I had it from God. A secret was unveiled. My prosperity plan is not a promise, so it does not answer to prayers. It's not a promise. It has no respect for fasting. My prosperity plan is a covenant, and until your part is played, I am not committed. Until your part is played, I am not committed. What? What's the covenant, Lord? Why the earth remaineth? Seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. How reliable, Lord, is this covenant? Jeremiah 33 and verse 20. Except my covenant, if you can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, that there should not be day and night in their season, then may also my covenant be broken with David, my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne. And with the Levites, the priests, my ministers, God is saying, as long as the day and night continues to exchange positions, my covenant remain in force. He went on and said, except my covenant be not with the day and with the night, or you are the ordinance of heaven, and the sun to rule by day and the moon by night, then you can bring my covenant. And God said to me, Every time you wake up in the morning, you see the sun. Then know my covenant is enforced. Hallelujah. You look up in the night, you see the moon. Then know my covenant is enforced. I screamed at that point. Yay! I can never be poor. A secret was unveiled that ushered me into the realm of financial fortune. I pray you see it. Amen. The mysteries you hear can't change your position. It's the ones you see that does. Is the one you see that saw. It's as far as your eyes can see. Not as far as your ear, as much as your ears can hear. As far as your eyes can see. Ephesians 3 he says, Oh, to me, who am least and least of all says, is great giving. To make all men see. To make all men see. To make all men see. I should preach on verse 9. To make all men see. What is the fellowship of the mystery? So it is the mystery you see that changes your position. It's not the ones who hear. Somebody will sit down there in his corner and say, maybe they want us to give. To give to do what? No. Do you need a change of position? Then see what God is showing. It is the mystery you see that changes your position. Not the ones who hear, not the ones who write, not even the ones who preach. I was preaching prosperity before I saw what I'm talking to you about. Because you can't preach anything you read. But you can't experience anything until you see it. You cannot experience anything until you see it. For as far as your eyes can see, unto you will I give it. People only experience what they see, not what they hear. Open down my eyes that I may see the wonders in your world. Open my eyes because I can only assess as much as I can see. This is so important. 
Mysteries are to be seen. You are to see them before you can experience what they carry. That was the end of any financial stress or struggle in my life and forever. Somebody's story is changing from today. There are people who are challenged financially, but they have done nothing in search of a change of position. Many have never listened to any tape in their life. They have never read any. book in their life that tell me where would they be free for you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free this is so important mysteries are to be saved we are in prayers. 1983, September 6. And suddenly the Lord came forth. From Psalm 34, verse 5, which I, I was read this morning, he said, They looked unto him, and they were lightened, and their faces were no more ashamed. Who are not ashamed. And he said, my son, you have two eyes. Can you make one to look up and one to look down? And I tried to do what? Anytime you are looking onto man, never claim to be looking onto me. But if you fix your eyes on me, you will never be ashamed. I said, God came down and demonstrated that verse in the course of prayer. You have two eyes. Can you make one to look up and one to look down? From that day on, I saw the efficacy of Psalm 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord that makes the heaven on earth. Only God is in way to need every man has needs yes, amen. amen every man has needs that destroyed my looking for solution from any human source including me psalm 62 verse 5 he said my soul wait thou only upon god for my expectation is from him. Did you hear me say, whatever God cannot do, let it remain undone. You don't take a case from a specialist hospital to a dispensary, do you? The moment they write up your case in a teaching hospital, you don't go to a community health center for attention. You should go home and get ready to die. That is, God is farther away to man than a specialist hospital to a community dispensary. No specialist hospital will refer a case to a community health care center. Whatever God cannot do, let it remain undone. Whatever God cannot give me, may I never have it. 
Wherever God cannot take me to, let me never get there. That's where those words came from. You have two eyes. It's any time you are looking onto man, never claim to be looking onto me. But if you will fix your eyes on me, you never be ashamed. In the name of Jesus, I'd like you to know that this God is all sufficient God. Is El Shaddai God. He has more than all that we will ever need. God has more than all we will ever need. God has more than all we will ever need. But a double-minded person is unstable in all his ways. Let not that man think he shall receive anything from God. You can't be one leg in and one leg out. No. If your eye be single, then your whole body will be full of light. Beginning from this moment, your struggle has come to an end. I heard this as eruption, 1983, October 1. As I sat down to seek the face of God in a camp, Isaiah 48, verse 17 came. I'm the Lord that leadeth thee the way that thou shouldest go. I'm the Lord that teacheth thee to profit. Now, God said to me, I am committed to leading you if you are committed to following me. Now, you can't tell how weighty that is. God is only committed to leading people who are committed to following him. He doesn't lead the Jack and Harry. God is committed to leading people who are committed to following him. And he knows your thoughts. He knows what goes on in your heart. He knows whether you follow him or not. So he doesn't waste his time talking to a man, talking to a woman that won't follow him. I said, Lord, I am committed to following you. Keep leading me. I have zero problem following Jesus. If I had, we won't be in this place. No. This would be my idea. This was going to be my idea. This is God's leading. This is the place. And see what has come to be. Grace to be committed to following him. Which has led your ministry to this point today. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. I'm committed to leading you if you are committed to following me. He led us from Kwara straight to Kaduna. From Kaduna down to Agege. From Agege down to the forest. I'm committed to leading you if you are committed to following me. God never leads backward. He always leads forward. So from today, I declare forward ever for you. And backward never. Now the mother of all encounters, March 24, 1984, were in prayers, asking one question. Why is this church not growing? Lord, what's going on here? In the name of Jesus, intervene. Build your church. Silence the gates of hell. He said, stand up and follow me. And then I followed him, life, not in a vision. Broad afternoon. And I was following him. They said, did you see him? No. How do you know you're following him? I was following him. How am I about getting to the stream side? He said, turn back. And I did. Then he opened, my, he opened my eyes. And I saw a layer of thick darkness on the roof of the church. He said, that is the blindfolding weapon that the devil uses to misinterpret what I am doing in this church. Can't you see he owns the church? He owns the church. Then, like he said, okay, deal with it. And I said, in the name of Jesus, there's a light that shines in darkness, darkness can't stand it. I command you darkness. Get off that room. And it was folded away like a carpet. And then he said to me, now, go tell the people, come and see. So I just printed the flyer, come and see. Show the diagram, put a little testimony there. And that was the beginning of the explosive church growth that we experience today. Then people began to come. God began to build his church. I tell you, the word was coming. He said, keep sowing the seed. And I said, what about? He said, the seed is the word of God. And as the grass grows, the sheep will come for it. 
and keep the grass gray, and the sheep will lie down there. For he maketh me to lie down on gray pastures. Round that revelation of church growth. Round it came in one sweep. I go back to the room and I said, Come on, get up, young man. Let's give God thanks. He just showed us the way out. And we give God thanks. And that was the end of stagnation. Somebody's ordeal with stagnation is ending now. Yeah. You believe it? Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Every of our sweatless triumph testimony in this ministry is traceable to definite divine secrets unveiled. Divine secrets unveiled. And in the name of Jesus, I pray that from this moment, your access to divine secrets will remain unimpeded. Finally, September 4, for time, 1987, I was in the world early in the morning. And I was in Hebrews chapter 7. And the heavens opened and unveiled a secret that launched our ministry into realms of financial fortune, inexplainable realm of financial fortune. What was it? Here was God speaking about the mystery of tithing. How Abraham paid tithe to Melchizedek and blessed him. Same blessed be Abraham of God, possessor of heaven and earth. He said, here men that die receive tithe, but there he receives them, of whom it is written, that he ever, that he liveth, that he liveth. Quickly it occurred to me. Tithe is a divine transaction, a spiritual transaction between the earth and heaven. He received tithe there, and that's where they opened the windows of heaven, and he has the key of David. When he opens, no man can shut. When he shuts, no man can open. Then he came down with light from heaven. He said, the same way I opened the heavens through tithe upon the life of individuals, so I opened heaven through tithe upon corporations, businesses, companies, and even churches. What? I've never heard it. I've never read it. He said the tithe that Abraham paid was not personal tithe. It was the tithe of his corporation. 318 went to war and they came back and they paid the tithe of all. It was not the personal tithe of Abraham. It was the tithe of his corporation. The tithe of his association, the tithe of his company. Hello. Hello sir. God was speaking to me, not a man. No, not an author. And I know the voice of God. It got to me with such a force that could not be resisted. It was burning like fire in my bones. That was the day I saw this ministry under an open heaven. And we are there visibly today. Glory to God. We are just blessed. Nobody's anger can change it. We are just blessed. You are angry, you just die for nothing. We are just blessed. We are blessed because he showed the secret to unstoppable blessings. We are in the realms of unending supply. Sorry. September 4, 1987. From that time on, for 34 years, we've never had one set back year financially. No. From 87, we have just been skyrocketing. There is no stopping it. There's no stopping it. Don't ever think it's a number. No. It's the windows. It is the windows. It is the windows of heaven that we have enforced by covenant practice. Can I hear your amen? amen? I want you to take time as soon as you can make a trip, a private trip to Landmark University and see the tremendous investment, the tremendous investment in infrastructure, the tremendous investment in 
you know, academic infrastructure, laboratories, and all that stuff. All done without taking a special offering. Yes. Without what? No number of population can match the supplies from the windows of heaven. Somebody's blessed. Amen. Your struggle financially ends today. The struggle of your businesses ends today. Very quickly as we want to round up. Our access to kingdom secrets demand the following. Number one, one must be born again. For unto us who are born again is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Mark chapter 4 verse 11. One must be born again. Those that are outside, they are only hearing the stories. They can't understand what you are talking about. Number two, one must be filled with the spirit. For the Spirit of God searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For no one knows the things of a man except the Spirit of man that is in him. So also the things of God, verse 11, let no man but by the Spirit of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the Spirit of man that is in him? Even so, the things of God, not no man but the Spirit of God. We cannot assess God's secrets without the Spirit of God. Number three, walk in the fear of God. Walk in the fear of God because the secret of God is with them that fear Him and He will show them His covenant. Matthew, Psalm 25, verse 14. The secret of God of the Lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. Think of Joseph, but I fear God. Genesis 42 verse 18. Think of Daniel. He purposed in his heart not to defy himself with the king's rich food. And he had unusual, unusual access to divine secrets. Think of Job, a man that feared God and eschewed evil, a perfect man. And he says, I was in the day of my youth when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. He takes the fear of God to flow, to gain access to the secrets of God. Can I hear your amen? amen. Number four, make demand for access on the altar of prayer. Make demand for access to the secrets of God on the altar of prayer. Very important. Call upon me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3. Daniel called his fellows and they stood in the place of prayer. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in the night vision. Daniel chapter 2 verse 16. They besought the face of God and then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in the night vision. They engaged the altar of prayer to assess divine secrets. Glory to God. Glory to God. Number five, one must engage in a spiritual search in the world and in meditation. A spirited search. Luke 15 verse 7 to 8. You light your candle and keep sweeping through until you find what is missing. You keep sweeping through until you find what is missing. And the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. So we engage our spirit man in the sun. In Isaiah 26 verse 9, he said, With my soul have I desired it in the night. With my spirit within me will I seek for thee. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. It takes a spirited search to assess the secrets of God. It takes a spirited search to assess the spirit of the secrets of God, we must engage that. He said, You shall seek for me and find me, and you shall search for me with all your heart. Jeremiah 29 and verse 13. With all your heart. And of course, number seven, we must engage in praise and worship 
in our quest for access, you shall have a song as in the night when the holy solemnity is kept. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 29 and 30. Then the Lord will cause his glorious voice to be heard. He will reveal the secrets required. And then you can return home with the victory you are longing for. We need to engage in praise to assess divine secrets. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. Well, on this liberation celebration day, I want us to know that it takes access to mysteries to gain mastery over the issues of life. It takes engagement of the mysteries of the kingdom to gain mastery over the issues of life. We are all very familiar with mysteries of the kingdom here. For instance, the Holy Communion empowers us to live like Christ. Amen. John chapter 6 verse 48 to 58 empowers us to live like Christ. It is heaven's toast for strength, for health, and for longevity. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 30. And his word is settled in heaven forever. So we partake of the communion for restoration of strength, restoration of health, and then confirmation of longevity. You see, remember the story of bone marrow cancer all the way from India to the communion. Fanta in the room, some biscuits somewhere there. And that same day, bone marrow cancer bowed out. That goes to authenticate the power inherent in the mystery of the communion. And you know what it is. Unveil to us in this mystery, in this ministry, is also the blood of sprinkling mystery. Drawn from the Passover mystery that took place in Egypt. And God said in Exodus 12 and verse 24 and 25. On that mystery is what God said. And you shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and thy sons forever. So the blood of sprinkling is a forever mystery. And it shall come to pass, verse 25, that when ye be come to the land which the Lord will give you, according as he has promised you, you shall keep this service. Can I hear your amen? Now, that is when he inaugurated the mystery of the blood of sprinkling, he said it is forever. And he's talking to us. Because if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And he has according to the promise. And it's not a Jew that is one outwardly, but that one that is one inwardly. Romans chapter 2, verse 28 and 29. So every child of God is a spiritual Jew. So that service is meant for us. And it is to stop the devourer from assessing our life and what belongs to us. Can I hear your amen? And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. When you are sprinkled, you become, according to scriptures, Zechariah chapter 9, and you begin to read from verse 13, 14, and 15, like the sword of a mighty man. The sword of a mighty man. You are, you are unmolestable. He said, the Lord of hosts shall defend them. And they shall devour and subdue with sling stones. So when you are sprinkled with blood, you just become a different person altogether. It is your covering against all assaults of the destroyer. And in the name of Jesus... The destroyer shall have no more access to your life. Yeah. yeah, but I don't understand this thing. No, you just see them. See them. Just see them. In Hebrews chapter 9, he said, you are going to sprinkle all the people. 
Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 20 and 21. You sprinkle all the people. All the people. Say, he said, moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and the vessels of the sun. Go back to 19. Go back to 19. He said, for when Moses has spoken every word of the law to all the people, he took the blood of calves and goats and water and scarlet wool and high salt and sprinkled both the people and what? Oh, both the boot and all the people saying, this is the blood of the testament with God has enjoined unto you. He said, moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the verses of the ministry. So, people are sprinklable. Places are sprinklable as a covering against the assaults of the destroyer. Can I hear your amen? Amazing testimonies everywhere and every time. You are the next in line for testimony. You are the next in line for testimony. Well, the good news is this. God is changing your story permanently today. We stop at this point. Feet washing. Enforces the release of our hanging inheritances. If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Genesis, I mean, John chapter 13 and verse 4. Jesus knowing that the Father has given all things into his hand, that he came from God and was returning back to God, he rises from supper. That's starting from verse 3. He rises from supper and began to wash the disciples' feet. And Peter said, you'll never wash me. What's going on here? He said, if I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. That can't be an illustration. That's a mystery being unveiled. That is, I am releasing your part in me to you through the mystery of feet washing. Feet washing is a platform for assessing your balance of parts in Christ. Whatever Christ died for that is not made real in your life as your feet is dipped into water today you are taking them back. You are taking them back. You are taking them back. If God cleared blood cancer through feet washing Whatever came with you as a mark of the devil to this liberation service drops into this water today. The host of Egypt, which you see today, you see them no more again forever. Feet washing is therefore a mystery that empowers our access to all things Christ has purchased for us in redemption. All things that Christ has purchased for us in redemption. It is a medium for the delivery of our balance of inheritance. It is a medium for the delivery of our balance of inheritance. So whatever you wrote down today that is part of your inheritance in Christ is released to you forcefully through the mystery of feet worship. You receive that. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Amen. There shall be waves of instant testimonies now. Amen. Your own is listed among them. Amen. SS is turning to A now. Amen. Cancer is being flushed out now. Amen. HIV AIDS is being cleared out now. In the name of Jesus. Every spell and enchantment. You know, because Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Whatever represents a cause on anyone's life is dropping off you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody believe that. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. The testimony of Bidemi here says, before 2010 and January 2013, I spent almost 75% ample time in the hospital. I was diagnosed 
of full-blown blood cancer, precisely lymphoma. On January 11, 2013, I laid lifeless on the hospital bed. I connected online to services in Canaan land via internet, and it was a fit washing service. When I heard the bishop's voice, it energized me. I stood to follow his instructions, to get a bowl of water for the feet washing. Although I was in excruciating pain, but was desperate for my healing. During the feet washing session, I dipped my feet into the bowl of water. All I did was rub and scrub one foot with the other and said, Amen, to the bishop's prayer. Right there, I slept off for about 20 minutes. When I woke up, I felt tremendous change in my body. The pains had vanished. My legs became lighter. I felt real peace and joy. Amazingly, the color of the water in the bowl had completely changed to a palm wine-like color. Immediately I knew God had rescued me. I'm finally healed, Mr. Bidim. This was away from America. The feast washing was taking place in Canaan land. Now, look at where you are. No matter your distance on this earth today, this feet washing will deliver your desire. Every misfortune will be washed off your life. And you will be free forever. Every terminal disease will be terminated in this water. And your destiny will be fully restored. In the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. Amen. Just before we undertake the mystery of feet washing, Jesus was not washing the feet of the multitudes. He was washing the feet of the disciples. And he was washing the disciples' feet. So feet washing is not for the multitude. It's for the disciples. It's for the redeemed of the Lord. So wherever you are this morning, under the sound of my voice all around the world, and you know that you know that you are not born again yet, this is your chance. Don't miss this opportunity. It happens once in a year. Wherever you are today, you want to give your life to Christ and become one of his disciples. Stand to your feet and let to pray with you. God bless you. All over the world, wherever you are, you want to become one of his disciples today, stand to your feet. This is your chance for a change of story. Stand to your feet. In all the view centers around the world, stand to your feet right now. You want to become one of his disciples? You want to be saved? You want your sins forgiven? Please stand to your feet. I'd like to pray with you right now. Glory to God. There are also people here that need to rededicate their life to Christ. Keep standing, please. You want to rededicate your life to Christ. Maybe you are once saved, but at the point there was a disconnect, and you know it. You want to reconnect back to the fountain of life. Wherever you are, please stand to your feet. Everyone that wants to rededicate his or her life to Christ, please stand. You have been one leg in and one leg out for some time. You want to be two feet in. Please stand to your leg. Stand to your feet right now. God bless you. God bless you. Some more are getting up. Wherever you are, get up quickly. Get up quickly. We pray for you right there where you are. Please stand. Stand to your feet. Rededicate your life to Christ today. Have a new beginning today. Somebody here walked away according to his testimony for 19 years. How many years? He was granted like the prodigal son of Luke chapter 15. Now, in fact, he came and said, I am the prodigal son. The one we are reading in the Bible is not the one. I am the prodigal son. I went away for 19 years. I saw her. I lost my limbs. I became impotent. He came back and dedicated his life to Christ and he was gloriously restored. He walked to this platform himself and said, I answered the call to the dedication. And that changed my story. All of you are standing up. Please move to the nearest eye to where you are. Don't fake it. If you fake it today, you'll be exposed tomorrow. Don't fake it. Are you in? If you are in, it will show. If you are not in, it will show. Many have been in church for years, but they are not really in Christ. They have been in church for years, but they are not really in Christ. So they are not having testimonies because they are not in there. They are not in Christ. Please move to the nearest eye to where you are. 
All of us in all across the nations of the earth, please move towards the altar right now and I'll be praying with you at the same time. Bow your heads, please. All of us who are standing up, please bow your head. Lift up your right hand before the Most High God. Lift up your right hand before the Most High God. And pray this prayer of faith after me. Say with me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud, Lord Jesus. I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. That I might be justified. Right now. I believe my sins are forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these precious souls all around the world today who are responding to the call for salvation. I ask that to cover every one of them with your precious blood. I cover you all with the precious blood of Jesus. And I decree that this call you have answered shall be a living testimony forever. If any man being Christ a new creature, I decree that all things around your life become new. And in the name of Jesus, the same grace I brought you today will preserve you for life. So shall it be in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Church, give the Lord a big hand for these precious people. Please complete your forms and pass them on to the kingdom friends that are standing by you. Shall we all rise to our feet? How many believe that the liberation mandate is real? How many believe that sweatless triumph is a reality? How many are plugging into it right now? Lift up your two hands and begin to assess every grace you see on this ministry. Begin to pray your way into them. He said, covet honestly the best gift. The grace of sweatless trial. The grace of ever increasing revelation. The grace of growing impact. The grace of a crisis free life. The grace of ever increasing growth and enlargement. The grace of unending supply. The grace for miracles, signs, and wonders. The grace of undeniable proofs of the hand of God in all aspects of our life. The grace of no setbacks. The grace of grace and glory. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Every grace on this commission. I convey.
Jesus. Precious name we have prayed. In 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 31, he said, But covet earnestly the best gifts. And I show you a more excellent way. That is the way of love. Just be in love with the Father. Amen. Anything you covet is deliverable. I saw the grace of noiseless exploits in Kennedy again. I coveted it. And bless God, by his grace, I encountered it. Every gift of God is freely given to the carriers and freely accessible by anyone that truly converts it. Freely you have received, freely give. Every grace on this commission is freely available if you will only convert honestly. If you only convert honestly. I don't know which one you want, but you can live a crisis-free life. This ministry has had that 34 years. We've had that in my family 34 years. You can live a crisis-free life. You can live a life of unending supplies. Whatever grace makes this ministry this great, I want it. Go ahead and pray. Jesus, precious name we have prayed. Pick up those papers you wrote in a moment. What exactly do you want me to do for you? He said that I may receive my sight. Okay, get your sight. He was just crying, general cry. Oh God, have mercy. He said, no, 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 no. We answer specifics here. Whatever specifics you have listed, lift it up to God right now and begin to call on him. Jesus, I am returning with this as testimonies. This is my own anniversary packet that I desire. You have called me because all things are now ready.
Cry out to God for a change of level. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. So shall it be. As you dip your feet in water today, welcome to a new realm of life. We are going to go now for feet wash. Let uh, ministers please take positions right now. And you put that underneath your seat. When you are back from feet washing, you pull it out and put your washed feet on it. Glory to God. And they are turned to testimonies forever in your life. I'd like you to approach the feet washing today. Be desperate for a change of story. After their feet were washed and Jesus went to glory, they saw them on the seas of Antioch. They called them Christians. Why? They walked like him. Amen. They had them speak. They took knowledge of them that they had been with Christ. So from today, the winning grace of the winner's family remains evident in your life. The winning grace upon the winner's family remains evident in your life. From now, they won't ask whether you are a winner or not. As soon as they see you, they say, another winner is here. As your feet is washed today, misfortune is washed away from your life. Spell and enchantment is washed away from your life. There shall be instant healings now. Instant deliverances now. In Jesus' name. Well, it's a liberation celebration service. So expect your supernatural liberation. As you come back, begin to prophesy over your life because whatever you went to that water for returns with you as a testimony. <laughs> Lift up your two hands. Now, this mystery is declared blessed for instant delivery. Your career challenges are turned to career breakthroughs. Your business issues are turned to business testimony. Your health issue becomes a testimony now. Yeah. That growth in your body disappears now. Yeah. That threatening disease is terminated now. Yeah. So shall it be. As soon as your feet is washed and you notice God's instant touch on your life, what to do? Just take your Bible with you, your bag, come to the front and begin to dance. We are ready to just see you celebrate Jesus and we we'll close in the service. Why the choir ministers go ahead right now for your feet washing as directed by the ushers, please.